Awesome. So I have something to teach today, uh, but not to you. I'm going to be with them. But don't worry, you are in more than capable hands. So please, if you don't mind, stand to your feet and give a warm Woodbridge welcome to Buckwheat. speaker still takes a little getting used to so you guys hang with me here <clears throat> at least I got it on and uh, apparently working so anyways hello everybody and uh, good morning it's good to be here on this uh, Sunday after our local stock show we're proud of all <laughs> proud of all our local youth and overcoming all this obstacles that they've seen this year with COVID and doing a fine job of showing their animals and um, uh, it's an honor to have you guys here as well <clears throat> excuse me um, we like to mix it up here every now and then and bring a, a fresh, uh, different perspective from one of us, and that's exactly what I'm attempting to do here. I'm, I'm tackling, uh, tackling a topic that is, that is near and dear to me. It's a difficult one. It's simple on the surface, yet difficult. And I want to dive into it, not so, not so much from a point of something I've triumphed over, but something that is, it's, it's hit me, it's, it's gut punched me before, and I see room for improvement with so much power in it, and, and, and a message through that that I want to convey to you guys. Um, let's see if I can get a little more. Can y'all hear me all right? Very good. All right. So, the other day, Jared, uh, Pastor Jared, he, he, he dropped it on me. He, he gave me plenty of notice, but he asked me if I'd be interested in doing the message again. I tried it once, and it worked okay. And, and... My first thought again was, oh, I'm so unworthy. I've, I've started the year off to a funk, and I'm so unworthy. I've got this, and I've got that. And as a Christian, we're under attack, and it's so difficult because we have this, this target on our back of source. There, there's a thief that it says in John 10:10. 10, 10, this is the devil. He, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy us. And so I, found my, I find myself with so many reasons of why not to when he asked me. And, you know, I, I had even in my back pocket, I, I selfishly, I, I had in mind getting off. Uh, I was going to get out on the Mexican border for a few days on a long weekend, do a little hunting out there and just get off the grid where I couldn't be found if somebody wanted to find me. And I had these things in my back pocket. And I said, God, you have no idea. I, I'm just not worthy. I can't do this. And, and I was using it as a crutch. But I, I said, I'd at least give a little prayer to it. And I prayed, and it did not take two seconds. It was a yes. And, and he, not only, he not only said yes, he said, you need this. And so I jumped into it. And I jumped into a tough topic, at least for me. It was kind of a weak spot in my armor, but one we need more than ever right now. I'll get to the topic in a bit. But he said, you need this. And so I jumped into days of meditation I, I got off of media for a while i got off of watching news and things that i could tell were sucking the life out of me in some areas not that they're all bad but i i, I removed a bunch of distractions i removed things that were i could tell in my way uh I rethought some things and, and and i got in the word and i replaced those gaps with reading the word for about 10 days i read and i prayed because i knew i had to get my pencil sharp because the test is coming and so I didn't have any choice. And I thought, well, let's see where this leads. And I want to tell you, even if this is a total flop, and it could be, it's not going to be short. I'll tell you that, so hang with me. But even if it's a flop, even if it's a flop, it was a huge blessing getting called on and saying yes because it gave me so much peace. And I feel there's power in prayer. We'll get to that eventually right now. Something I was missing there for a little while. So I, I mentioned John 10.10 10 and, the, and the thief coming on and still kill and destroy. Sometimes I feel like when I beat something in my life and I'll be high stepping like, like a corner I watch going to the, I'm sorry, like a receiver I watch headed to the end zone after a wide open catch. It's almost like a punt and he catches it and he's high stepping. And he just, he, he did not account for the safety. And the safety got beat, but he was out for a vengeance and he hits him. And it wasn't a fumble, but I can just picture it. If it had been me in my walk with God, it's a fumble because I beat something. I'm like, oh, I got this. I got this. <laughs> and then, whop, something else comes out of nowhere and smacks you. 
And that's our walk with God. We, we've got an enemy out there to kill, steal, and destroy. He's going to get crafty. He's going to be tricky. He's going to do something that we did not see coming. Ephesians 6.12 tells us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the rulers of the darkness. So if it feels sometimes like a Christian, as a Christian, that you've got a target on your back, it's probably because you do. And if you feel like you do, I want to congratulate you because you become a threat to the enemy. So that's something to consider there when you're going through something. You become meaningful and a threat to the enemy. But we, knowing that there's an enemy out there that we are, in fact, challenged and threatened by, we must up our game. We must, we must be able to stand and fight. And I have no doubt among us that many of us are, would, without two seconds notice, if a danger showed up in here against something evil, we'd stand up, we'd fight, and we'd die without thinking about it. No questions asked. But why is it so hard for me? Why is it so hard to stand up daily and live against evil? Which catch, I, I can't keep walking without tripping on my shoelaces sometimes. So we need guidance. We need that reset like I had when I got in here and, and got ready for this. We need that guidance that's in Christ. We need a way to get there. Because like it or not, we're going to go through storms. Right now, we're in a big one. And there's a lot of things hitting home. There's a lot of things I didn't know. I'm having to kind of say, well, I thought this was this way, but, you know, this is for real. And this and this. There's so much I didn't know. And I find that in my walk. that I try to do so many good things to please God, but in the end, I'll end up tripping on something. Or, or we, it's, it's sin, or it's a distraction, or sometimes we get so busy that we don't allow God's place. We've taken so many things and we've filled the void that God had and desired in our life. And we're like, I'm sorry, God, I just don't have time for you today. And it doesn't work and we wonder why. Hey, have y'all been there? I, I've been there. I, I, I'm like, why is this not working? It's, it's, and I'll start studying on this later for, for me to bring to you because I'm, like, I'm in the middle of this. And then it makes sense. But our job as a Christian is to be salt and light to a dark world, as Jared mentioned earlier. We're to show people love even when they don't deserve it. What they so desperately need to see from us is what Satan's battling us so hard to prevent. He does not, does not, does not, does not want to see the light of God shining through us believers. People need it. And we may be the only way they get to see it, but yet we fall short. So we have to be on guard. We know we're going to fall short. And we know... There will be storms in life. It's an absolute guarantee. Many of you have been through a bunch of them. We all have, some more than others, no doubt. The storms in life are like, I remember last summer, I think it was, there was a, a you, you look at the, the global radar. I love weather events, but <clears throat> it would have been an awful thing if you'd had that beach vacation planned in the Bahamas, which we'd kind of looked at possible ideas of going to the coast and whatnot, but... <laughs> It was hurricane after hurricane after hurricane stacked in the Atlantic coming from the west coast of Africa where they develop and they're marching their way across the Atlantic Ocean headed toward what is American mainland and the Caribbean and all that. And I looked at it, it's like the storms of life, they're headed our way. You're either in one, coming out of one, so on and so forth. The storms are coming whether you, whether you acknowledge it or not. So when we get in the middle of that storm, I've been, I've been in the middle of a storm on top of a mountain one time, and the storm is all around you because when you're at 12,000 feet, you're in the cloud. Uh, there's lightning underneath you. I mean, it's all the way around you, and all you can see is the rain and the hail just pounding you in the wind and the lightning, and the, you hear the thunder, and you're shaking. You don't know which way to go. You have no, there's no way, there's no way you can't see anything. You need like a pilot up there flying super high altitude that can see the sun above the clouds and can give you a little bit of a heads up of what's going on with radio saying, hey, you need to get down to this ridge and you need to get, get shelter. You need to be there because it's moving this way. You need something of a heads up. We know in these times, at least looking back on past storms, the only thing I can say for sure in the middle of a storm, and we're in one now, the only thing I can say in the middle of it is that the only thing I know is that I really don't fully know. I can be sure of that much. But I do know the one who does. And it's easy to say. I know it's easy to say, but I know the one who does. And, but I have to stop and realize there's some things I don't know. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask. 
Proverbs 3, 5 tells us in these times to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So we, we need someone like that pilot way up above the clouds who can tell us where to go, who can see the big picture, not just the clouds. He sees the cloud tops. He sees the sunshine. He sees it all. We're like a bunch of little ants on a mound walking around, and all we can see is what's happening right in front of us. We're busy, and we get tangled up in that, and that's all we know what's going on. But there's a giant picture that's eternity, and that's everything else that's going on around us. We have not a clue what's going on. We, we're not even capable of understanding it. What God does, God is up there. He's a, he's a lifeline that we can utilize and it's it's easy you could you could get that as a takeaway from the message that yeah we need to pray but it goes so much deeper than that we're going to hit on some some easy topics and some hard topics on prayer james 5 chapter 3 uh, i'm sorry james chapter 5 verse 13 hits if i can get there with my shaky fingers it hits on prayer says, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make that sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. In the end, it says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So, good passage on prayer. We're going to get to some more. So we have that direct avenue to God. It seems simple on the surface. It will happen. It, it, when, you, when you dissect that verse a little bit, and that's what I was looking into, because, you know, I see the, 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 the prayer of a righteous person. So that means I've got to get right with God, right? Righteous meaning getting right with God. So, okay, that's, that's easy enough. So we move a step further. We dig into it, and... Uh, we, we see that it's, it's such an important part of our walk with God. We have to get right with God. We know that many times we're not right with God. And as I mentioned when I jumped into the start, we're not always right, but we're trying. And I, I looked at Hebrews 11 where it's, it's an all-stars list of the Bible of sorts. And it goes into a lot of very influential people in the Bible. And you would think having that much part of the Bible that these people, uh, to do with it, with the writing of it, that they would have been almost perfect but they weren't many of them were train wrecks in a lot of areas of their life i think we can relate to that sometimes but they all had one huge thing in common they had faith and through prayer they relied on guidance and they did not stay in their position of life but yet they rose and became victorious and moved on and went on and did big things and that's why we have a lot of our writings that guide us daily in our walk with god this is the word of god so prayer, like I said, it's our lifeline. It's our rescue. It's our guiding beacon when we don't have a clue where to go. I know many of us were facing a, a, a lot of tricky decisions this year, a lot of unknowns, as I mentioned. The only thing I don't know is, it, is the only thing I know is that I don't know. And you've got storms ahead of you. You've got business decisions. You've got job decisions. You've got marriage. You've got the list is so comprehensive, I can't hit on it. You know what, you know what your storm is. It, it, it's, the, the list is insurmountable, but God is not. The, the key is that prayer offered in the right way with God. I've seen so many miracles that I couldn't list all of them in praying. I've, I've seen something as small with family losing a contact in the middle of a field. And you're like, okay, well, you got two acres. We narrowed it down to two acres, and we're looking for a contact. And you're like, well, why do you even mention that? Well, because he, he uses little things to show his power sometimes. And I've seen something big that people didn't have a no way. They had no business making it to tomorrow, but they're here decades later. Over and over again, I could write a book cover to cover on all those, and maybe we should. Maybe we should, but I'm also going to hit on some of the hard topics too because I think it's the good things we dwell on, but it's the hard sometimes I've seen as a common hindrance when I talk to people that have, that have gotten, that have turned and walked and, and, you know, and, and drifted away. It's a common hindrance, and I, I can relate to that as well. well. We'll get to that. But God is so powerful and mighty and faithful that our prayer to Him when done right, will be heard. And I've got... 
again, I've seen so many miracles and so many answered prayers, ranging from the tiniest to the biggest. And I've seen, I'll use my son for an example, I've seen Carson offer up prayers, and he, he, he really gets into it. And he, he does it, the more I've studied this, the more I realize how sometimes right he is about it and how sometimes I'm wrong about it. But he'll offer up a prayer, and he'll and it'll be something silly. I'll be taking him hunting, you know, and he'll he'll pray for, uh, you know, we were up on top of some mountains in New Mexico one time, and he he prayed for a nine point buck. I was like, okay, all right. So the next morning we found a nine point buck, and then it, it, one time it was eleven point. One time it was a, I could give you so many examples, and it's fantastic. One time we were we were trying to grab catfish, and we were up on a bank, and we'd been all day and not found a catfish. And he said, Lord, I want two catfish bigger than anything anybody's ever. And I want one of them 90 pounds. Or I can't remember all the specifics he put out there. I'm like, dude, it's almost dark. You're, you're not going to, we're not going to catch catfish. And I fell in a hole about five minutes later. And a catfish nipped me in the toe. So I knew there's a catfish. And so we, we ended up, after dark, we caught a couple of giant catfish. And later I'm like, all right, God. And, and I can't help. And I feel guilty sometimes. But I'm like, God. You know, a nine-point buck or a catfish, that's fantastic. You know, I love it. You know, we know that was a view. I had no business it. But God, Mrs. Let's call her Mrs. Jones. She's dying of cancer. God, why, why, can't, we, why can't we trade here? I, all this is good, but why can't I dictate the terms? Why can't I tell you how it's going to be? You've shown me your power in prayer, and I've seen healings. I've seen so many great things. 90% of the time it works fantastic. But what about that 10% of the time? And that was tripping me up sometimes. And I I can't help but address that. And that was what was maybe over my abilities here is to try to address that. But I had to dive into it just a little bit because it had weakened my armor and my walk with God for so long that I needed to address that for myself to address it to you. So... Going back to, we, we look at why's and scripturally, why? Oh, what, what's a good prayer? What do, you, what do you do for the right prayer? Why is sometimes my prayer maybe not heard? Obviously, sometimes you're going to get no for an answer, but why is sometimes my prayer maybe not heard? And it, it says, in the, the righteous person. So in James 5, 16, it talks about the righteous person. So I said, okay, i got to be right with God. I can get that. So then you go into Second Chronicles seven fourteen, reading in more verses. I'm digging up verses on that. I was digging it up. And it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. It says they will hear. It doesn't say he'll always answer, but it says he'll hear. But that's a lot of things. If they'll humble themselves, if they'll turn for their sins, if they'll pray, they're going to have faith. I'm like, okay, this, this list is getting more comprehensive. I can see where I'm tripping up sometimes. Now this makes sense, God. And it does say you'll hear, but not always answer. So I'm like, all right, this makes sense. This makes sense. And so then I go on to another one. James 4, 3 he goes even further to say what? When you ask, I'd love to go in these full passages, but it would take forever. This is always already taking a little while. When you ask, you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives. Because when you get it, you, or that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I'm like, oh, you got me there. Like, so how do I get around that one? And there may not be a way to get all these right every time. And you're not going to sometimes. But that would hit me in the gut because I'm like, well, Lord, I need some help in my business. And Carson being the prayer warrior that he was, sometimes I, or in a job and setting, sometimes I brought him in. I'm like, yeah, whatever I'm doing is not working quite right here. So I'm going to I'm, I'm, get him in there and pray for it. And it worked. And so, I'm like, but Lord, I still want to know what am I doing wrong there? And yeah, okay, well, I do this and that, and sometimes I'll, sometimes I don't do that. Nope, nope, and, yep, wrong motives, you got me. So it's a, a lot of things to address there. Answers, it kind of makes sense there. kind of makes sense, but there's still questions. Why heard and not always answered? Well, this is a good question. I jumped into this one for a little while trying to, trying to address it. Uh, one very simple analogy just from my own life that, that, that God dropped on me or maybe that I'm using. I, anyway, regardless... It is an analogy for this situation. We were at the lake one time. We're all sitting on a dock here, and there's like a dividing line between the grass and the dock. Nice dock. The water is seven, eight feet deep. It makes a little U going out this way. 
my little daughter Emery's playing over here, and it's probably 100 degrees outside, and she's got this kind of wrap around life jacket, and you can tell she's miserable. <laughs> And she has no wrong intentions in asking me, Daddy, let me take this life jacket off, please. And her mama told her no. And I'm like, I'm going to be the good guy here. And so I said, as long as you, as long as you don't get on the dock, you can take your life jacket off. You stay over there. There's six of us adults on the dock. I'm like, what can possibly go wrong? We're breaking the rule, but yeah, this is going to work. So sometimes we're asking God for something and he knows the end game. He knows that we're going to have a disobedient step that's going to cause us tremendous ruin, or could. So you know where this is going. We're sitting there. She needs to go get something off the dock. All she has to do is step across the corner of the dock right there, except she missed. Down she went. And I was five feet away. It was a good learning experience. I always thought kids would flop on top. <laughs> nope, she sunk right to the bottom. And I went down, and I was in so fast behind her that I actually pushed her up under the dock, and it was kind of deep. And uh, it didn't take two seconds, so it seemed like an eternity. But, so I reached around, and I grabbed her. And the funny thing, though, is that she's sitting on bottom, not moving at all. She's just waiting on me. <laughs> I finally look around, and I see her little blonde hair underwater. I'm like, oh, there she is. So I grabbed her by the hair, and then oh, I'm throw her up on top. And she was just chill. She's like, oh, daddy had me. When they asked her, she never freaked out. She's just like, daddy had me. That could be a lesson in itself there. But the problem is, is I, she had a request. It was harmless. It was in good intention. It was offered in every right way. But it was terrible for her well-being. And God only allowed it as a learning experience for us being right there in front of it. Many things, there's no telling how many things in front of us we're asking for. We have no clue what the end game is. You say, well, okay, I can see that. I can see that. He's protecting us from harm here on this earth in our earthly body. But you, you've got a tougher question still. It'd be nice if we could just leave it there because that would be a good lesson. But you've got a tougher question still. <sighs> what about all those times, which for me aren't many, but they're there. I try to do those things that said in the Bible. When I threw it all out there, when I laid it all out there, and it didn't get answered. What about the time that there wasn't healing of the actual body? I remember laying there for a month, not laying there, being there for a month and a half with someone close. And, and I, I did it, in reading this, I did it all totally backwards. But in the end, it wouldn't have affected God's will that was already set in place and something I couldn't control. There was, there was an eternal plan, but not a, a plan that, that fit my agenda. But I, it, I did it all wrong. I, uh, I gave God an ultimatum of sorts. I made him all sort of promises. I was going to end up in some cool places. I mean, you, God's not impressed by words. He's impressed by actions, but I did it. I, I, I offered an ultimatum. Many of you have been there. And I, I, sh I share this just to drive this point home, but... At the time, and for a short little while, I named it, and I claimed it, and I blamed it. And I found myself in a funk, not surprisingly. I found myself later not knowing for sure whether my... I found myself not praying. Our job as a Christian in times like this is to lean on God and trust in His understanding. We do our part. We pray in the right manner, as it said here. In all these scriptures we pray in all these right ways and then we leave it in his holy hands we leave it what better hands is there to leave it in first peter three fifteen says but in your hearts revere christ as lord and i'd failed in that manner i'd failed to reveal him as lord afterward it hurt a little bit but i gained so much wisdom afterward I'd failed to look at things in the eternal perspective. I'd failed to acknowledge God's bigger plan. And I think we've been guilty of it. And sometimes it's not going to be easy. We will be faced with such things. But do not, do not let that affect your daily prayer. So when we're faced with these things, God has a bigger picture in mind. He's got a perspective that we can't comprehend. That's an eternal perspective. Like I mentioned, the little ants on an ant hill, all they know is what's right in front of them. You can't tell those ants that there's an enormous earth that's 20-something thousand miles around when all they know is an 18-inch ant mound 
in me trying to tell God that I thought he knew what he was supposed to do, me telling him that, that I knew better than he knew what to do, was shameful. But it still hurts, and there will be times when we get no for an answer. I want to challenge you, even in those times, even when it ends that way. 1 Corinthians 15.55 says, Oh, where, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? This is a hard one. But God's got it in His arms. What better hands can something or especially someone ever be in? Even in that one instance, even in that case, what better hands can they be in than in God's hands? What, what more can you ask for than that peace? Because ultimately, this time that we're here on this earth is a tiny little slice of an enormous pie. This time that we're up here is a tiny slice. And we're looking, and this stuff is important. Don't undercut it. Don't underestimate it. But it's important. But we're looking at a big picture. So we have this all these times when God does these miraculous things. We need to not discount just because, just because of a time or two and, and times when we've, when we've not gotten the answer we desired. We need to not let up on our prayer. We need to not seek to pray right. We need to not, in this time of COVID, in this time as we march into 2021, we need to not slow down on praying for those people who are sick because most of the time they're going to be healed. There's a powerful and effective God out there who heals with prayer. He hears us. He does not always answer, but He hears us when we do it right. We need it. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, your family, everyone around you need it. You need it for guidance. They need it for healing. Everyone needs it. I've been there. I've been gut punched. But in the end, I was looking for peace and I got it. No matter the outcome, God can give us peace. No matter. James 4.14 says, We're miss, it appears for a little while and vanishes. Romans 6.23 tells us the gift of God is eternal life. So we know we're here for a short time. That gift of God is eternal life is for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's our end game. The most important thing. One thing you cannot afford to take a chance on. That's one thing you need to get right if you haven't addressed before. And I tell that as, as seriously as I can. That's the most important factor. So there's some things, that, so many things I can't explain, we can't explain. But I, I know the one who can and who will one day. But to know that one, you got to know him. When things begin, they begin to fall in place and make sense when we know him. He doesn't tell us things overnight, but in the end, he will begin to give you that peace he will, that's one thing He will not withhold from you as, as you pray and you seek Him. In closing, we as Christians will fall short of the glory of God. We will fall short of the glory of God sometimes. We will come under attack from Satan with a target on our back. It's a guarantee. We... <clears throat> we will run into struggles. We will run into storms. We will need guidance from God all the time to help us, help us get through those storms in life that can and will be thrown at us. It's because these things that we as Christians have that direct line of God in prayer. We need to use it. In spite of all of our past experiences, we need to use it now more than ever. We need to get on the horse. We need to use it with all we've got, knowing God's got it in full control. And we're subject to Him. He's an awesome and mighty God who created everything, knows everything, and He's better than we can comprehend. He understands more than I'll ever understand. We need to use that power in prayer right now. When we have faith, when we turn away from sin, when we get real and we get right with God, when we humble ourselves, we go all in when we pray. We ask with the right motives. Our prayer is powerful and effective and will be heard. Many times it will be answered by God in a great and mighty way. Occasionally, occasionally 
it'll be heard and not answered in the way we had in mind. But all the more, God is powerful and He hears our prayers. And prayer is powerful. In the end, He gives us peace, as I mentioned. And that's what I can, that's what trumps all. Peace through the storm. Peace that's unshakable. That's what I want. And looking through that, because you're going to go, I guarantee you, I, I wish I could pro promise you a rosier picture, but I guarantee you're going to go through a storm and there won't always be a nice happy ending as far as earthly things go. But there is a God who provides peace. Philippians 4, I'm almost done here. Y'all hold on, bear with me. I'm not going to keep you much longer. Speaking of that peace, that peace just came over me. It, it came over me in, in preparing this lesson because I needed some of these answers. Some of them are not a cut and dry answer, but they lead you to the God who knows the answers. And He might not tell them to you all at once. But he has peace to give you. And he gave me that peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's what I ask for him, is for you to guard my heart. God, my heart's not any good. Without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I'm lousy. I'm a, I'm a bunch of things without you, God, but I need you. I need your peace to guard my heart. Guard it in the good times. Guard it in the bad times. That's what we need. We need to use the power of prayer. We need that peace. As we wrap up, I have two final questions for you. First and foremost, and I hit it already, but do you know him? I'm not saying, do you, have you heard of Jesus? I'm saying, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him truly? Simple question. I'd get it right now if you don't know. Second, are you understanding and are you really using the power of prayer? Or have you discounted it? Have you doubted it? Have you maybe not used it right? The question, are you using it right now to the fullest? In spite of past experiences, are you using it to the fullest Accepting his answer, going for victory either way, and are you seeking that peace that comes with it? It's out there. The power is out there, and the peace is out there. I think someone, so many of us, including myself, for a long time missed the boat because we discounted it. It's great and mighty and powerful, just like our God that we serve. I challenge you on those things. It's not easy, it's not an easy message. It, it, it hits pretty good. But it was such a blessing in preparing, and I, I hope it was meaningful to you. I appreciate you guys being here, and uh, thanks for hearing me out there.